Welcome back. Joe Biden says he wants to heal the country. What? With rhetoric like, rhetoric like this the other day. We have racists and they've existed. They've tried to get elected president. He's the first one that has. The best response to that was from radio host Charlemagne the God. I really wish Joe Biden would shut the F up forever and continue to act like he's starring in the movie A Quiet Place because as soon as he opens his mouth and makes noise, he gets us all killed, okay? I think a lot of people feel like that. But it's not just Biden, it's his media mouthpieces too. When our own Janice Dean took to Twitter to reject the revisionist history that New York did a good job, Andrew Cuomo did a good, good job managing this virus. Former CNN host Soledad O'Brien condescendingly wrote, meteorologist weighs in. If there's one person qualified to speak on Cuomo's disastrous handling of the pandemic, it's Janice. She lost both her mother-in-law and father-in-law to the governor's demented nursing home policies that sent sick elderly residents back to infect everyone else. So, this intolerant, spiteful lefty launches a sexist attack on her. As always, the left are guilty of the exact thing they accuse everyone else of, in this case, fueling hate and division. I particularly wanted to talk about this, um, Tammy and Rob, with you two tonight, because of course your background, you know the left very well. Um, both of you um, have, have made that journey. So Tammy, what is it about the left do you think that that, that that sort of makes them so hateful? Well, my first book, interestingly enough, it's on 19 years ago now in 2001, was called The New Thought Police. And it laid out the dynamic of what really feeds the left, which is this self-loathing, which when you talk about projection, it includes that. So it's their own self-loathing, this idea that they or humanity, that it gets projected that as a larger framework, that they're the problem, that we're the problem, that their parents are the problem, and it becomes part of this infused political philosophy that humanity is the issue. And when you start out looking to change a, a country or get involved in politics, and your foundational belief is that human beings are worthless, or that humanity is just not good, but that you, as a result, because you you know more, mm. you are you know you're doing what you can to try to change things for the better. Then it becomes this attitude that you are superior, and that inevitably mm. this is what happens. You begin to look down, and it's the it's the dehumanizing that we've seen historically that leads to genocide, and then it also comes into something simple like on a person to person dynamic, like with O'Brien. Uh, you know, not looking at someone like Janice Dean as a human being, but trying to really denigrate her based on a job or something else that she's meant to be looked at as less than everyone else. Yeah. This is what has yeah. transformed everything in our society. And I, Americans, I think, are going to vote against that in November. Yeah, it's, uh, I was really, really shocked by that. So I know it's about a week ago and we've had a million mini scandals since then. To me, it was so shocking to see a public figure just be so C cruel and, root and condescending. I thought it was truly disgusting. Rob, what's, what's your thought on all of this? Well, my take on this is that for, for some reason, I've, I've never met Soledad O'Brien in my, in my life. She's not super relevant to my generation, uh, but I'm blocked by her on Twitter. And apparently her, um, <laughs> this is a part of, I, I am, it's the truth. So am I. Um, and apparently this is her <laughs> reputation club, yeah. um, on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I guess that, I guess I'm in great company. Um, <laughs> But what struck me is the elitism that, that was inherent in, in the way that she went after Janice Dean in this way. So you are not meant to say something because this is your job, and I am more than. And so there's an elitism to it. And it's this elitist strain that is running through the left right now, which is very interesting. Because I remember back when I was on the left, we always thought that the conservatives were the elites. We thought that they were the fat cats. Um, and it turns out the complete opposite. And, and I wrote about this in, in my book, um, Always a Soldier. I talk about coming out as conservative. Conservative. So I came out as a conservative Republican about two and a half years ago at this point. And in the vitriol and in with which I was treated 
uh, by yeah. the left when I decided to come out as a conservative because in their eyes, they owned me because I'm black and gay and there was nowhere else for me to go. And that was a lot of that. I got a lot of the elitism. I got a lot of the nastiness and negativity. And what it fundamentally comes down to, Steve, is the fact that they are not in power right now and they are lashing out. You see it lashing out nastiness on Twitter. You see it lashing out in the riots mm. and, and the unrest that we have all seen on the street streets over the past couple of months so that's what this is all about and, if, and we, well, let's wrap it up there but there were you know one thing I just wanted to add to the discussion is that in my experience you know just just witnessing this over the years there's a huge difference which is when conservatives disagree with someone they disagree on the policy they can be friends they're not they don't sort of put this personal layer onto it whereas from the left it's always questioning your motives it's not just that you're wrong you're a bad person you're evil you're morally reprehensible that is a huge difference um, and it seems to be getting worse not better 